We ask your blessing on Catoosa County, all those who live there, and all those who serve there. And just, Lord, we, we pray for tonight, we pray for the United States of America. May you bless us and guide us. In your heavenly name we pray. Amen. Amen. Salute. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Please be seated. This time we're going to offer another cup of hearing, Jan. Chairman and board members, the purpose of the public hearing is for the board to receive public comment on a proposed amendment to the county's Unified Development Code, or UDC. The UDC is what was adopted a few years back that replaced our, our zoning and development ordinances. The, the purpose of the proposed amendment is to add a couple of definitions they would be a definition of what's called a host home, which is something that is recognized and authorized under state law. And it's essentially a home where an individual houses one or two persons that they're not related to who are adults that have disabilities, and they essentially provide foster care for these adults through a contract with the state of Georgia or one of its agencies. The proposed amendment would add a definition of host home, as I said, which is defined under state law, and would also include host home in the definition of what is a permitted family under our ordinance. Under our current ordinance, not more than four people who are unrelated can live together and be considered a single family. So if you had four roommates in a house, so to speak. The reason for this proposed amendment is it is one of the conditions of the voluntary compliance agreement that the board entered into, excuse me, with HUD back in excuse me, November of last year, we agreed that we would incorporate this definition into the UDC. I'll be happy to answer any questions. Is there anyone here that has any questions or comments on this particular matter? Okay. We'll close the public hearing at this time. I think we do have some agenda items acceptance of the donation from the first volunteer bank. I think the presenter was ill and we're also going to remove the proposed approval of a letter of support with the Nature Conservancy. And as I understand it, we will add executive session for personnel, legal, and proposed land acquisition. Okay. You want to have anything else? Do I have a motion to approve the amended agenda? So moved. All in favor of approving say aye. Aye. Thank you. <coughs> this time has everyone had a chance to look over our minutes from the January 15th meeting and if so, can I get a motion to approve the minutes as is? So moved.
I just want to thank the board for putting me on and giving me the off the board. And I do hope that I can serve the county well and everything else. And I have one more thing to add. I do really hope y'all reconsider about this call. We really thank you. Thank you. Thank you for your service, sir. Anybody else like to speak? Uh, Ma'am, you want to go first? I'm two. Three. No. Ladies first. senior discounts everywhere I go. Um, I, I want you all to know that I have nothing against you personally. I, you know, I, I will speak to all of you. I like every one of you as people, as human beings. I just happen to have a problem with how you're running this county and the money you're spending. And I realize we have two new commissioners, so, you know, don't take, take this personally either. I'd like to start off by saying that the transportation tax you voted to put on the ballot for March the 19th and is the only issue on the ballot will cost the taxpayers an estimated $17,600. If this issue had been put on one of the ballots last year when we had three elections, this cost could have been avoided. This is just one small example of how our commissioners are wasting our tax money and ignoring basic needs of the taxpayers. So why should we even consider giving more money if they cannot manage the county finances and live within our means? There are many taxpayers in this county who are working two or three jobs trying to make ends meet. On top of that, you expect them to vote to pay another one cent, a total of eight cents on the dollar for everything they buy. Give me a break. This may not seem like much to you, but it does add up. And please do not threaten us with property tax increases and the fact that out-of-county people will come here to shop. You've already beat that one in the ground. You may be surprised that out-of-county shoppers may dwindle, especially those in Chattanooga, if they know they will have to pay eight cents in sales tax. Theirs is nine and a quarter, which is only one and a quarter cents difference. You have the privilege of full benefits, including full medical benefits for your whole family. Many of our county taxpayers don't have this privilege and have to pay a lot to obtain medical benefits. You seem to forget that you're only part-time elected officials, not full-time employees of a company. I also think that sometimes you forget who you're working for, us. Hopefully the word will get out as to what you're trying to do. If you stop buying $500,000 houses with a swimming pool for the fire department, then have to go to the extra expense to renovate it, you might have the money to repair roads. Maybe the pool should be open to the public to help pay for the building since it's our tax money. Regarding the new Ford Edge vehicle you plan to purchase, I presume this vehicle is for the county manager since that department is the one requesting it. To my knowledge, we have never purchased special, a special vehicle for any other county manager. Why are we doing it now? The approximately 42,000 for this vehicle could be applied to upkeep the roads. The county should not be wasting money by purchasing new expensive vehicles for anyone in our county government. I think you people are spending out of control with spending our money, such as buying expensive houses, vehicles, and land acquisition. Who will keep up with when this vehicle is checked out and checked back in? I know that there must be other cars in the county available for the county manager to drive. What about leasing? I would love coming before you commissioners to request anything I wanted and be able to get it. That is not likely to happen. However, it is mine and others' tax money you're wasting. You do not have my approval to spend the way you are doing. Okay. Who else would like to speak? Mr. Patterson. Thank you. Well said, uh, Larissa. I agree with everything you said. Um, I'm, I'm sorry the, uh, the uh, chairman of the uh, commission is a little upset tonight, but uh, we come here to exercise our First Amendment right, as it, uh, as the way 
it's supposed to be. Uh, I couldn't agree more with anybody than Clarice. Uh, I think it's a disgrace. The roads around here, the potholes are a disgrace. You can't even get those fixed. They can't cost a lot of money. As far as the county manager getting a, a car, I really personally don't have an issue with that. You pay the last scoundrel uh, $500 a month, uh, a guy that shouldn't have even been here, so uh, give him a car allowance of 500 a month, which is more than cover a $40,000 car. Um, and I also don't like the threat of property tax increases. Uh, where I come from, they call that extortion. When you, when you threaten somebody uh, to get something. Um, that's pretty well, uh, oh, and, and also I take uh, issue with appointing uh, Ray Johnson on the Economic Development Board. It's like you're trying to keep your buddy in politics. He got voted out of the job. The people didn't want him as a commissioner, so why do they want him on the Board of Economic uh, Development? That's like you're trying to play the old buddy system. We'll keep our buddy close by, maybe next election, maybe something else. But uh, I don't think he should be on it. The people of Catoosa County have spoke, and uh, that's how I feel. Thank you. Anybody else like to speak to that?
for support for a fundraiser for for uh, people to, to support that from a historical point of view, but not with key splash money or with even with splash money. Like that, uh, could, but do consider the uh, historical value of that. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Chairman, Commissioner, my name is Bill Squeams, and I live in this county. And I go along with what Roger said, because however, I have a problem with what I talked to y'all about that was on Facebook about other city council people already in the motion of using this tea tax for that very purpose. And we're all against that. I mean, she was out there putting, she was working with you all and use that tea tax to make bike trails and walking paths and things like that. Well, that is not their place. That is your all's place to make decisions about what we're going to do with this money. And I, in my opinion, y'all started out talking about roads with this tax and it should not go for anything else but the roads, because that is your main. And the more we build here, the more roads are going to, it's just common sense. Maybe y'all lose touch with common sense when you get elected. Some of you do, some of you don't. But it's common sense, the more traffic you've got, the more roads are going to get worn. And somebody at some point needs to call a moratorium for a little while just on building and cool it. Yeah, so what if you make somebody mad for two years? At least the roads are not torn up and things are not going haywire and people are not getting storm water in their yards. So I would, and that's what I would ask you in this tax. Uh, we're not for it, and we're especially not for other people going to use it for bike trails in greenways like the Nature Conservancy. And see, before this came out tonight, that was on Facebook three weeks ago, so I know you had to be discussing something because we're all not done out here. So thank you very much. <clears throat> My name is Sam Martin and I live in the county. Um, just a few things I want to bring up to your attention if you guys will please consider it. My road seven years ago was the project of a SLOST project. They were putting in sewers on my road. And they were supposed to repair the road. Everything was supposed to look really nice, better than when they first destroyed it. And it still looks like junk. So my confidence in any SLOST project is really, really low. I don't, I don't believe you guys really come up with good projects and finish it like it's supposed to because I still live on a road that's got potholes and bumps and the city will come in and, and there'll be a water leak and they'll dig the road up and they'll fix it and they just patch it up. It was terrible. And it was an expensive pot on Katusa Station. It was a terrible <coughs> cost project. I know they needed a sewer, but it, I don't have a lot of confidence in space. Number two, the problem I have with T-SLOSS is typically in this county, when we have a SLOSS tax, it's a one cent tax. And I think in everyone's mind, when t spots was proposed, at least it was for me, I was thinking it was going to be another penny tax, when it's actually an actual percent tax, which, when you look at it in the context, that increases our sales tax by 14%. If I went to the bank and wanted to borrow $10,000 for something, I would have to be very specific with the bank exactly what I was going to use that money for. And I feel like the commissioners, if they expect us to approve a T-SLOS, they need to be very specific what roads you want to repair, specifically what you want to do with the money. I feel like it's, it's all been kind of balled up into a, a vague project, and I have a really big problem with that. We already pay, pay state income taxes. <coughs> Increasing the sales tax is a big hit. Threatening to increase property taxes when my property taxes have already gone up three years in a row is just ugly. You just don't do that. And I'm a farmer. And I'll be honest with you, if I didn't have a farm and have land that I just loved, 
I would pack everything up and I would move over to Tennessee. Even though their, their sales tax is higher, they don't deal with the state income taxes and they don't deal with some of the other part which the, the state of Georgia throws at us. So I feel like, at the very least, you could give us a specific list of what you want the tax to pay for. And I also feel like, consideration, it would be nice if you would actually wait and put this on the November ballot. It would save the county money for the special ballot. Plus, typically people are more aware of votes and elections and things of that nature in November. I feel like bringing it, you could have had it last November. And that was a huge election. But instead, you kind of pushed it off till March. I feel like that was kind of underhanded. I don't know any of you personally, but I do feel like the politics in Catoosa County is kind of a, a big boys club. That's my experience from the past. So I feel like the least you could do for the citizens is put it off until November when more of us are aware and maybe give us an exact list. We may not be totally abhorrent to teeth loss if we knew exactly what it was going for and if we had confidence that you would get the project done. But remember, I couldn't just go into a bank and borrow money without an exact plan for it. And when I'm my budget, when I'm over my budget, I have to look at it and I have to say, well, I gotta get rid of stuff. I can't afford all this. And I really wish the county commissioners would consider the same. Thank you. Would anybody else like to speak? I am Laura Ogden, the Holiday Director, and I'm here to ask for the ASCAP license renewal. This is an annual fee. The amount this year has gone up just a little bit to $712, and that is based on the census data from Catoosa County. This licensing fee pays for the background music that we play for public events, special events, um, the background music in the hallway. It pays for uh, background music when you put somebody on hold on the phone. And this does cover uh, Catoosa County. It is a Catoosa County uh, license, so it does cover all of Catoosa County for $712. Okay. Do we have a motion to approve? Do I have a second? Second. <coughs> Any questions? Okay. All in favor of approval, say aye. 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 Thank you. Thank you for all your hard work. Thank you. Jeremy Bryson, is that the Mr. Chairman, um, this is uh, for approval for a deductive change order to our FDR 2018 resurfacing project. Uh, the original contract with CW Matthews was for $1,888,917.15. Um, after the work was complete and all the quantities were measured and adjusted, um, we, we saved $53,169.24. Um, so what we're asking is, is for you guys to um, do a change order to adjust for the actual com contract amount, which is $1,835,747.91. Okay.
the amount of $41,485. Do I have a motion? So moved. Second. Second. Any questions or comments for Jeremy? <coughs>
that leaves the employment of the county must wait six months before they can receive their funds. There is precedent in two prior occasions where the Board of Commissioners has authorized the county to advance the employee's portion of the pension funds prior to the six month waiting period upon approval by the Board of Commissioners and upon the employee signing a promissory note agreeing that the county would be repaid from their portion of the pension plus interest at the time it was released from the county's pension plan. The, the board has received in their packet a hardship request from Zach Steele, who's a former firefighter at the county, requesting that the board allow him to receive an advance of his employee portion of the pension plan. If the board approves this request, Mr. Steele will have to sign a promissory note agreeing to repay that amount to the county plus 6% interest at the rate of 6% per annum, and that would be deducted from his portion of the pension plan before distribution to him. And I'll be happy to answer any questions. We have a motion. Commissioner to write off certain delinquent <coughs> accounts on the personal property tax bills. Uh, this resolution would apply only to personal property and it would apply in a situation where uh, someone opens a business, either a corporate account or an individual account, the tax bill is generated, then before that tax bill is paid, that business goes. Uh, goes busted, the assets get repossessed by creditors, the owner is not in the county and he can't collect the money from the owner. In situations like this in the past, that delinquency has just carried over from tax year to tax year to tax year and it's never collected and it's never going to be collected. And it sort of inflates the digest by saying that we've got 
this money out there on our diet test that we know that we're never going to get. It does require the tax commissioner to certify that it's not collectible, that he can't collect it against the owner, he can't collect it against the property. Part-time 
um, 4-H program assistant. Um, she has been wonderful and she's been with us since November. Um, and then we have Mary Beth Pola, who's our secretary, who's been in our office for seven years. So she has seen, um, she's been here the longest. She's also not here with us. But as you can see, we have quite a few new people that have been here just in the past six, seven months. So one of our divisions is agriculture and natural resources. And um, some of the services that we provide in that area, we do soil, water, and forage testing, as well as radon testing. We also do distance diagnostics in insects and plant diseases, as well as forestry and tree disorders and plant and weed identification. We also help folks with their pesticide licensing, uh, or pesticide applicator licensing. Um, something also in general that we do, we provide farmers and homeowners with information, as well as educational opportunities. So information could be like, let's say somebody would like to um, start a backyard chicken flock in their, in their house. Okay, we have information on how to start that, what chicken feed they might need, anything like that. We also offer educational opportunities. So as being a new a &R agent, I haven't really had the opportunity to start the educational opportunities yet, but um, there's plenty that are around Catoosa County that our Catoosa County locals have participated in. Like last fall, there was a Master of Cattlemen's um, classes that, that was in Whitfield County and Dalton um, that quite a few people participated in, which is wonderful. Um, another thing that we do is we do site visits to investigate any agriculture or environmental issues. So we do get quite a few calls where we do home visits, visiting folks. Maybe they have something weird going on with the grass in their yard. They see something weird on a tree, something like that. We can come and investigate and we have the link with specialists at UGA to figure out what's going on so we can fix the problem. So, some things that are new in our ag program since I've started, we are now doing a pine tip moth survey with the College of, or with the Warno School of Forestry and Natural Resources. Um, pine tip moth is a um, invasive pest that's actually been in the state for a while, but they're just doing another survey to see its distribution. So we have one um, bug trap that's actually located behind um, Wood Station Elementary that we'll be checking all year round, and um, we just put it up, so that's kind of exciting. Um, next, we also have a hay and forage study that's going on with one of our local farmers. His name is James Lyles. And on his farm, we have put um, a bunch of different side-by-side -side plots um, with different types of hay or clover, um, and looking at how those grow with different pesticide uses or different seed um, cultivations. Um, but that study will result in a field day looking at the end results in April, and we're lucky to have an extension specialist, Dr. Dennis Hancock, who will be coming to our county for that field day to go over that study. So those are just a couple things that are going on in our app program, which are pretty cool. And next, I will give the floor to Mr. Caleb for our 4-H program. Uh, I'll try to make this as plain as possible. Uh, so, uh, Julie had mentioned I'm not new to 4-H. I've actually been in Chattooga County for the last four and a half years doing programming there, and so uh, I built up a really, really big and uh, successful program there, we're looking to do the same thing here. Joy laid a really good foundation for where we, we started, from where we started, and so what we're doing is uh, we're taking that and we're growing that into different things. And so as 4-H agents, our job is youth development. We're the largest uh, youth development organization in the state. 4-H is the largest youth organ uh, development organization in the world. And so our job is to, um, if we, grow, uh, we always like to say grow in 4-H, if we grow good kids, and they're going to grow into good citizens. And so that's one of our goals. And so um, the past of 4-H was the Corn Club and Tomato Club, uh, which eventually came together to form the 4-H Club. And so when we think about the uh, past of 4-H, a lot of us think very rural-based um, organization. And we do still do a lot in agriculture but uh, we've actually expanded out. And so you'll see us do a lot of service leadership and citizenship projects. And so uh, that's where when I say we're trying to grow good citizens, that's where that comes in. And I'm gonna talk about some of those leadership opportunities that we're actually working on right now that are national programming. And students here in Catoosa are actually working on those. And so uh, we actually have competitions, different competitions we do. Um, for instance, we just now came back from a fifth grade competition uh, Georgia Highlands College, it's a public speaking competition.
with 54 different categories that students can compete in. Uh, we have over 75 youth from Catoosa County participate in that. We actually have the second largest uh, county out of 14 counties that were there. And so we have a large group that was competing in that. And they actually can compete in that all the way uh, through high school. So it's a really good opportunity for them. Uh, we'll do poultry judging, so we love chickens. Uh, and it's really neat to see uh, kids who aren't. Um, you know, Catoosa County has moved in the last 20 years from being uh, more rural-based to uh, we're getting more urban-based. And so for students to see chickens and get to interact with them, uh, it's really exciting for some of them to do. And it's my favorite judging team that I, ju uh, that I, that I coach. I love it. And so uh, we'll do that. We also do a code. We're going to start a coding club. Uh, where uh, students will actually get to create their own apps or their own games using coding. Uh, and then we'll also, we have a uh, cotton ball and consumer judging, it's a consumer judging event. We also um, have a safe program. And so that's shooting awareness, fun, education. And we have a BB air rifle team right now. And uh, we're actually meeting at the Graysville Gym, uh, Precinct Gym at 6 o'clock on uh, Mondays. And students are shooting. We shoot four positions, standing in and sitting prone. And uh, it's a five meter target, and so uh, 10 targets in five meters. And so they're learning those skills of, as I always like to say, the best gun control is to teach someone how to safely use a gun. And so whereas a lot of programs in, the, in this country are cutting out a lot of shooting sports activities for youth, uh, Georgia 4-H continues to grow and grow and grow. And so I'm looking at, we have BB now. As these students get older, we're looking at creating a 22 rifle team for, the, uh, for um, high school, and then possibly even getting into a shotgun and modified trap team for seventh grade through uh, high school. So we're trying, uh, we're looking at expanding that safe program. Of course, we still have livestock shows, so uh, dairy beef and uh, swine, as well as sheep and, uh, and goat, are always uh, things that we can work on, and uh, the Georgia National Fair, as well as the junior national show which is coming up at the end of February. We're hoping to take a few students down there to see that. We do have one student here in Catoosa County, uh, Tanner Manitou, who shows swine in uh, Georgia 4-H. So uh, we have that. Community events and, and projects, we're going to talk about a little bit. Um, and then our base program. So we meet with um, roughly around 1,500 fifth grade students every month. We have over 40 in-school club meetings we do a lot. Uh, it's a pretty big number. Uh, so we're there, uh, we're, we're doing, in our in-school programming, uh, we do some STEM science-based programming. Uh, here in Catoosa County, it's kind of a split between social studies and science right now. And so we want to come in to science classes and fill the gap uh, that teachers may be needing to help fill. And so we talk about inherited traits and, and different things like that. And then we also work on CCRPI lessons, which are basically teaching life skills. Uh, you'd be surprised at how many, even high schoolers, don't know how to correctly write a check. And so we come in and we've been teaching fifth graders how to write a check. Uh, we've also been talking about IT careers, such as marketing careers or IT careers. So different things they may not see on a regular basis. Uh, they may not know what a loan officer is. And we're coming there and we talk about finance. And they're learning that those people that are in that office, when you walk into the bank, uh, they, never, they never get to seem to come out. Those are loan officers and what their jobs are. And so we want to teach life skills and we also want to teach uh, STEM-based learning because that's where the state is really kind of pushing right now. And then our outside of the classroom activities. Uh, basically all of our events are outside of the classroom, uh, but we still do camp. Uh, we do a county council meeting each month where our 4 uh, H's can come together from the different schools. Because uh, I've, I've left from, from Chattooga, I had four elementary schools, now I'm going into eight elementary schools. So it's really important for those students who don't, don't get to see each other to come together and they're sharing interests and they're getting to spend time together. So um, when we go to camp at Rock Eagle this summer, which some of you may have went to camp when you were in 4-H in, in school, and so we'll be taking roughly about 60 students to camp uh, this summer just at Rock Eagle. We also have other camping programs, but um, Georgia 4-H has the best program, uh, camping program in the nation. And uh, that's, that's evident by how many people want to be a part of it. Uh, we actually even have counselors come in from other states that want to be a part of our program. And so uh, we do a lot of things outside the classroom as well. Of course, most of that is at no cost to students. A few things like camp will have a cost. But we try to do everything we can uh, to keep kids uh, active without having to, to pay out of pocket. Uh, we obviously have roadblocks, just like in any county. Uh, just like anywhere in the state or a nation that you go, there's a roadblock. Family structure is a roadblock. 
uh, family structure is not really the same as it was 20 years ago. We deal with a lot of single parent homes and grandparents uh, raising children homes, uh, whether it's any county, especially in northwest Georgia. And so that's just something that we see as a roadblock that uh, we do what we can uh, to uh, help implement programs for those students who are able to, to come and, and, and uh, we're an all-inclusive club, so we want everybody to be a part of it. And we also, with transportation, transportation is our number one roadblock. A lot of that has to do with, uh, you know, a single parent home. Uh, someone mentioned earlier, somebody might be working two or three jobs. And so we do provide transportation uh, for every activity we do. Uh, even if we have to go, we have, we've made house calls before to pick students up and make sure they get to where they need to be. And so uh, that's our job. Anything that we can do to provide youth with a, with a mentor or an opportunity to be involved in something outside of school, that's what we want to do. Uh, sports are 365 days a year, and we all know that. <laughs> Used to not be that way, but it is now. Uh, out of, we're now school clubs. Students see me once or twice a month <coughs> school and so a lot of things we do are outside the club and outside of school and so uh, that can be a roadblock for us testing requirements parental involvement um, it's hard for parents uh, when they're so busy to be involved in everything that's going on with kids now uh, and then getting the word out so uh, I can talk to you today uh, but not everybody hears this I can post it on Facebook but not everybody sees that and so I think that's in the, in the world today where not everybody reads the paper on Wednesdays uh, we get into a lot of issues with getting the word out about events and stuff. And then, of course, funding for everyone, uh, county, state, federal. <laughs> funding is funding. And so we, uh, we don't get money from the state. Well, luckily, we do have a county here where we're able to provide a, a building and, and things like that for us. But uh, most of all of our fundraising, funding is done for, through private fundraising. And so we do do a lot of, a lot of fundraising. Uh, our students do fundraising for and so, uh, the future of Patusa County 4-H. So our goals and expectations. Uh, obviously, social media. Uh, if you can't, if uh, we're, we're really put, hitting hard on social media, uh, David Buckler, who's not here right now, uh, has really done a great job with uh, making us some awesome flyers all the time and puts them out there. And so we've created a new Facebook page, so go follow Patusa County 4-H. And uh, we'll be posting things on there, our newsletter activities that we're doing, as well as Instagram, and then, of course, all the kids. Um, you never know about Snapchat. No. So, uh, in-school involvement, like I said, we're doing STEM. We'll also be in October, we're gonna start doing Unity Day. So it's an anti-bullying day uh, that's in October. So um, I hear some people, sometimes parents say um, that uh, kids have it easier now than they used to. And uh, it's really hard for me to explain sometimes that they don't. Uh, because at least, um, <coughs> at least, uh, when somebody was mean to us or if somebody was going to bully somebody, they had to physically tell you or put their hands on you when we were young. Uh, now, uh, with social media apps and with the internet and with Facebook and things like that, nobody even has to be in the same state as you. And so there's a lot of things we see that we will, um, <coughs> students, you know, with the, the numbers came out the other day that we have um, our teenagers now in the United States are more depressed than they've ever been in, in the history of the United States. And so we're seeing numbers like this, and we want kids to know that they're not alone about stuff, and that um, you know we're an all-inclusive club. And so uh, we're doing, we're going to do other activities like this in school, so that um, it helps us as far as promotion, and also uh, it helps kids to know that you know somebody's there. And so um, that one's kind of uh, personal for me because I've had some I had some, a student of mine who um, one time in, in Chattooga County um, handed me a, a set of razors one time after we had a long meeting one day. And she said, I'm good, I don't need this anymore. And so moments like that remind you that we're working with kids and kids can be very influenced about things and for them to have a positive youth in their life is what we're trying to do. And we're lucky to have an office full of positive role models for these kids. Uh, for mentoring and tutoring, we're working on mentoring uh, younger students, our seniors, high school level students, uh, they're working on mentoring the younger ones, and so they want them to see the opportunities they've been able to do and, and to pass that along. Uh, we went up to the Chambliss Center for Children, which is a 24-hour daycare up in Chattanooga, and it's a humbling experience to go there and see, uh, and it means a lot to our kids to see that. It helps them to see, a lot of times, you don't appreciate where you're at while you're there, and uh, this helps the students to appreciate the, the homes that they get to go to and the opportunities that they have. 
um, community activities, you're going to see us a lot more out in the community. Uh, I hope that um, after this, in the next few months, after the next few months, I can't go to Walmart without a fifth grader yelling at me. Uh, that's always my goal. And so you're going to see us out about a different community <coughs> events. We may not be setting a booth up or anything like that, but we'll be around. We'll be walking around and be involved in the community. And then uh, we want to know unique needs in our area because our job is to be the most value to you. And our job is to create value where maybe somebody else is missing it. And so that's, our, that's what we want. That's what we want our kids to grow and do. And so um, right now we have two students, uh, Emily Monger, who is a 10th grade student, and McKinley Pepper is a 7th grade student, who will be uh, going with uh, myself and Ms. Roberta to Columbus, Ohio, uh, on February the 28th for three days for a training. It's a digital ambassadors training with uh, 4-H, National 4-H is teamed up with Microsoft, so it's through a Microsoft grant. And uh, they're going to learn about the, uh, the, we have a digital literacy gap in Catoosa County. And uh, basically what that means is, for our county, is we have really good internet service. But we have a lot of people that don't know how to use it, or don't use it. And so um, our job is going to be, they're going to go up there, they're going to learn it, we're going to be the facilitators, we're basically going to let them run wild. And uh, they're going to teach classes to people, so maybe parents or grandparents, about how to log on to, um, to your students or your grandkids' um, portal uh, through the school. So you can check grades, make sure they're doing their study island or their IXL. Or maybe um, somebody just wants to learn how to work Facebook so they can keep up with pictures of, of, of relatives in you know, Ohio or, in, or, in, or you know, wherever, and Texas. And so uh, we're going to have them, they're going to do some classes and teach people. And so we're putting, the, we're putting the control in their hands. And we're letting them be the leaders of this project. And so it's an awesome thing that we've done. Um, after this, when we get into August and September, we'll have another group of two or three that will actually be able to go to another training. And so it's really exciting. And then, of course, we want your ideas. So if you see something in the community that needs to be addressed, uh, that's something you think youth would be good at. Um, you know, we, they have leadership in action uh, projects where they create something that, that's a need in the community, they can fill that need, and then they're able to present their project on that. And so we have a lot of students that want to do things like that. But, it, you know, just like we didn't, when you're 14, 15 years old, do you really know what the needs are in your community? And so without your input and without you guys telling us stuff, then we may not know that that's a need. Uh, but we're really excited about this digital uh, ambassadors and, and this Microsoft uh, project. And then um, I always like to put a final thought on something. And it's hard, uh, just so you know, that was really fast, as fast as I've probably done one of these presentations. I didn't want to, I want everybody to enjoy this beautiful day outside, right? Uh, but it, um, it's hard to sum up 4-H in a five or ten minute presentation. Um, I, my answer for when somebody asks me what 4-H does, uh, I've given 50 different answers in the last two years uh, because there's something for everybody. Uh, if, kid, if kids are farm kids and they want to do poultry judging, then it's there. If they want to learn how to work more in IT, it's there. Uh, so everything you can think of, uh, I always like to say we're Chattooga, oh, we're, sorry, see, I still get to have it. We're Catoosa County Extension and anything else you think you might need because uh, that's what we are. And so uh, I always like to leave with a final thought, and my final thought is that if you believe with absolute honesty that you're doing everything you can, do more. And so uh, thank you guys. I hope to see you. You're always welcome to stop by the office, come in, and uh, just talk to us, chit chat. We're there. That's what we're here for. Most of all these programs Julia's talked about, um, <coughs> anything really, it's the, you know, there's some soul samples, there's you know a few dollar cost there, but all those services we can provide you are free. And so um, that's what we're here for. We're here to be a, an asset, a resource, and, and, to, and to be a value to you. So thank you. Thank you.
about this and you know, in case they won't get it. <laughs>